Wildlife crime is one of the most lucrative illegal businesses in the world today and stands as the fourth most profitable illicit trade worldwide, estimated up to $23 billion annually. There is a deadly crisis. 80% of Southeast Asian mammal species are threatened due to snaring today. Illegal wildlife trade is the second most dangerous threat to the world species after habitat destruction. This includes tigers, elephants, rhinos and pangolins. The battle to combat the serious threat to our wildlife is essential and requires a multi-pronged approach. It involves governments, law enforcement, businesses and individuals like you and me. What you just witnessed is a glimpse of the amazing natural world in contrast to the dark side of illegal wildlife trade. With Southeast Asia being an epicenter for poaching hotspots, transit points and consumer markets, Singapore's strong connectivity makes it a critical node along the trading route to put a stop to the flow of illegally traded wildlife and wildlife products. Singapore has successfully intercepted illegal shipments of endangered wildlife. As a major transit hub, Singapore has a crucial role to play in addressing illegal wildlife trade with innovative technology solutions. Not only in Singapore, but across the region and beyond. ICA had successfully detected cases of pangolin and ivory smuggling in containers where both items are prohibited under CITES. On 3rd April 2019, the National Parks Board, Singapore Customs and ICA inspected a 40-footer container which was en route from Nigeria to Vietnam with declared frozen beef. 12.9 tons of pangolin scales and 177 kilograms of cut up and carved elephant ivory were uncovered instead. We had some intel on pangolin scales and elephant tusks that was coming through. Um, so we seized these containers um, and we managed to um, send some of this information to our counterparts in China and uh, a few people were arrested there. NPARCS and Singapore Customs are the controlling agencies we work closely with to curb illegal wildlife trading. ICA has regular meetings with them to discuss the modus operandi used by the smugglers in case detections. These trade skills will then be shared with ICA image analysts and cargo officers so that they can keep a lookout for similar methods of smuggling. There are several reasons behind the demand for illegal wildlife trade ranging from uh, medicinal value of wildlife products to status symbol. Another key reason behind this is high profits uh, for trade in rare species that is driving many endangered species to the age of extinction. Illegal wildlife trade drives destruction of natural resources that we all depend on. Illegal wildlife trade drives deforestation, which brings uh, wildlife species uh, closer to humans and that increases the chances of animal viruses coming in contact with humans and COVID-19 is one example. Singapore being a transit hub, it has a huge potential to develop solutions, technology solutions, and innovative approaches that can help addressing illegal wildlife trade, not just in Singapore, but in the region and probably across the globe. We also have the Center for Wildlife Forensics. This is a new lab that we set up in 2020. And what we are doing is um, wherever products that we have, for example, our elephant ivory or pangolin scales, uh, we use DNA-based technology uh, to understand where these uh, specimens come from. Um, we've been quite successful in um, understanding where some of our elephant tusks uh, actually originated from, in which country in Africa. So uh, that's a very powerful tool. The Centre for Wildlife Forensics was set up to provide uh, forensic scientific um, support 
used for research and for enforcement efforts. Innovative technology is extremely important in our work. What we're looking for is to enable both the field teams and the lab teams to, be, to come up with as rapid a, a, a diagnosis as possible. So an example of this involves our recent development of an app. Uh, NPARCS, together with Microsoft and Conservation International, developed an app called the Fin Finder, specifically to look at images of uh, fins from sharks and rays. So what the field team will do is they will take pictures of these fins and they will uh, be analysed by an AI or artificial intelligence platform and compared to a database of around 15,000 pictures. So this speeds up enormously the time uh, taken for the field officer to make a very quick decision. ICA is scaling up our screening capacity and capability. We also increasingly utilize data analytics and artificial intelligence for more targeted risk profiling of cargoes to clamp down on smuggling attempts. For the laboratory side of the house, we have an ongoing collaboration with Professor Sam Wasser at the University of Washington uh, in the United States. And we're working with him to look at establishing a database for the different types and species of um, pangolins no such database exists now. So having this database will allow us to work out the provenance or the origin of where these um, wildlife products associated with pangolins have uh, originated. And this is critical in the um, enforcement efforts that need to be taken. So we are very glad to contribute to that global effort uh, in uh, the fight against illegal wildlife trade. We are the CITES managing agency um, for the country and you know CITES is the Convention of International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora. Um, so we do enforce and regulate any trade in wildlife is legal and we do enforce against illegal wildlife trade. We are also the board members of the Wildlife Crime Working Group um, hosted by Interpol. So this is an international body uh, that is made up of um, enforcement agencies, CITES management agency, NGOs, uh, around the world um, and it's very important that we share good practices and not only that right uh, we also share information on our wildlife seizures as well during the COVID period we had um, online webinars um, and one of the target audiences was the sh uh, shipping companies and logistic companies and this was very important to make them aware that um, sometimes this illegal wildlife trade can be going through shipping lines and, sh uh, ca and cargoes as well so this allows these logistic companies to be more aware uh, and put uh, check and balances in place. So um, there's one um, program called the Cyber Spotters Program that's started by WWF. Uh, it's an excellent program to do cyber spotting um, and this allows us to see what is the trade online because that uh, globally is also a growing uh, marketplace as well. So um, we're glad to involve the youth as well uh, in this um, monitoring of these uh, marketplaces. I think the answer is in the next generation. So um, we should be targeting the youths, uh, educating them on the ills of the illegal wildlife trade. In their future, they may not see um, majestic species like the elephants or the tigers, you know. So by curbing this illegal wildlife trade, we make sure that uh, the future generations can get to enjoy this style of beautiful wildlife and nature. We recently amended our Endangered Species Act to raise the penalties, to raise the fines as well as the jail terms. This is very important because it not only um, says that Singapore is very serious about uh, the, the fight against illegal wildlife trade, we also want to share our expertise. We want to make sure that wildlife you know, remains free you know, and they, they, they can survive and you know, they are not doomed to extinction. Illegal wildlife trade is a multi-dimensional problem. It can only be addressed if we all work together. There are many of us around the globe fighting the trade, both on the ground and behind the scenes, with a lot of conviction and desire to protect the natural world for our future generations. And it's an emotional roller coaster. All of us in the team for CWF will recall the July 2019 seizure, which was, uh, I mean, it involved both uh, raw ivory mainly, some carp and pangolins. Um, at the point of time when we were, had discovered it, um, based on the intelligence and we were unpacking the, um, 
their articles from the containers, there was a lot of excitement because of uh, the intervention. But then as we started to lay out all the ivory and the scales and they just kept coming out of the container, you could sense that uh, there was the energy in the room started to go down and to a point that it became dead silent. And you could see that people were visually very upset because it then dawned on us how many animals had died, you know, and with that then that we were looking and there was all this sense of death in the room. And people had to leave the room to deal with their emotion. And I think that stayed with us for a very long time. And, and those of us that were present, even though that happened a couple of years ago, I think we carry that memory very sharply with us. And so that's why this links back to the work that we do. And we know that it's, we're here to fight the good fight. In order to combat wildlife crime, we will need strong collective actions from all stakeholders to stop poaching, stop trafficking, and to stop the demand. We are all in this together. Let's continue to fight the good fight.